If you're stuck in a rut, here are 10 ways you can keep your bass practice engaging. This first one is something I absolutely love doing, and that's playing along to your favourite song. So for now, forget bass exercises, scales, arpeggios, and just pick one song, one that you love, one that's kind of doable for where you are now. That's going to work on your timing, your technique, and your ear training, not to mention increase your repertoire. Another thing you can do is join or form a band. This follows on from point one, really. If you get a bunch of musicians together, that's really fun. You're going to find out very quickly what they want from you. And it's probably not that tritone substitution or that tapping lick. It's just solid bass playing with great tone and great timing. You don't need any grand lofty ambitions. You could just be playing in someone's bedroom or hire a rehearsal studio or whatever. It just can be fun and that's really gonna motivate you and it will make you practice too. The third tip is to record yourself using a simple device or software. By doing that, you're gonna be able to track your progress and really hear your progress over time and identify the areas in your playing that need work. Usually for most people, it's, it's timing and technique is, is linked to that. So I've got Logic Pro X running in the background here, and that's how I record myself. If you have a Mac, GarageBand comes with it, but you can have any kind of digital audio workstation, as these things are called. You can get one of those, or a physical recording device, like Zoom do some of these. And by having that, you can just record yourself very quickly, very simply. I'm going to combine tips four and five here to demonstrate something and actually play something to show you. So the first one, or tip four, is experiment with effects. I find this really inspires my playing. Whether it's an envelope filter for some sort of funky thing, an octave pedal, or this one I'll show you. It's Waves CLA Guitar, so it's a guitar plugin, but it's got lots of ambience to it, and I love what it makes me sound like when I play bass. Now, the next tip is to challenge yourself with new genres or scales. So if you primarily play pop, learn a bit of jazz. If you only play blues, maybe learn a bit of progressive rock. It's going to move you in a different direction and get you out of a rut, that's for sure. But I'm gonna demonstrate something here. I'm gonna play using Waves, CLA guitar, some cool delay and stuff on it. And I'm gonna play a scale, which I'll just show you afterwards. What I was doing there was using the E string as a drone and then playing just on the G string a different scale to one that maybe I'm used to, or maybe you're used to. I'm playing an E mixolydian mode here. I'll put that in a PDF link below. You can download that and have a go. It's got this really calming, quite exotic effect if played a bit like that. The Beatles used it a lot in their Indian music phase. It's like a E major scale, but with a flat seven. So combining effects with a new scale, I find myself doing stuff like that all the time. It works on loads of things. Accuracy, very easy to have the A and the D strings ringing accidentally when you don't want them to. You get this horrible mush. So I have to work on my muting for this. I have to work, make sure that I don't like accidentally go to a wrong note, so I need to know the notes. I need to know the fretboard. Loads of things. It's not just mindless noodling, which it might look like. It's working on actual proper bass stuff. The next tip is to set small, achievable, tangible goals. So not something like, I want to get better. That's a bit too vague. Maybe something like, you know, by two weeks, three weeks time, I want to be able to play Good Times by Chic. You know, Bernard Edwards' amazing line. I've got a lesson on that right here, actually. That will gamify practice a bit. It'll, it'll make you a bit more invested in your own practice if you've got an actual tangible goal that you're working towards. If you have a really, really clear objective and then you map out some practice time, you'll, of course you need that, then at least you have somewhere that you can see, a pathway you can see forward and you can get there. The next is to use apps and online resources. There are loads. They stretch into so many different categories. There's one called Transcribe, which you can use to transcribe songs, slow down, loop things. A couple I've used. One is Moises, where you can isolate the bass line and just hear it on its own. 
which helps transcribe it. Or you can remove it from the original and get a backing track that you can play along to. One thing I did was take a dream theatre song called The Alien and just remove the drums and play along to that. Another one I've used a fair bit and I really like and recommend is called Tom Play. They've got this backing track library of loads of songs and you could remove the bass and play along with the tab and notation or you could remove the tab if you're learning to read music or just read the tab. You can loop sections. That's a really cool one. <laughs> Tip eight is just to improvise. Now this is fun, but you do need to know a few things. There are loads of ways you can do this. You can put on a backing track or you can put on a drum beat and just have a few parameters. So I'll put a drum beat on now and I'll just make something up and I'll just show you what I'm doing and what I'm working on. Okay, so we're at 120 beats per minute. I didn't actually think about what I was doing at all there, and that was what I was working on. Can I make up a bass line just on the spot, just like that? So I was in the key of G, and I'm doing a chord progression here, G. I'm going to the six, that's the four, that's the five. Okay, so I'm working on my knowledge of what chords exist in these different positions of the major scale. I've got a music theory course and I've got another course called From Beginner to Basis that goes into this stuff in far more detail, enabling you to be creative and improvise. If you don't know any of that stuff to start with and you're a beginner and maybe your technique's not quite there, of course you're not going to be able to do that quite like I was doing it. If you get a few little elements of playing together, you know, know a few notes, know a few shapes. That's a major pentatonic shape, which I love. Chromatic, that's chromatic movement going from one note to another. You know, if you learn a few of these things and the drum beat gives you a little bit of pressure to get to these chords in time. You know, that's one of the biggest things we can do as bass players, play with decent tone, touch, timing. Focus on fun techniques. Now these are the things that you want to play on bass, the, the little areas of bass that excite you and make you want to play, but you know, maybe you're not going to be using them all the time in gigs. Like for example, tapping. Now this bass, the action is horrific on this bass at the moment, it's too high, but let me just, I do this kind of thing a lot when I'm practicing. <laughs> You know, this I never use this in solos or anything. It gets my timing together. It focuses on technique or whatever. This kind of thing. Now that might be more usable for me. I just did a hammer on followed by a pull off. I might, that's an A minor pentatonic. I might just work that around. I'm just working on that particular technique. Another one you can work on is slap. Again, using the same notes. I just reached for a plectrum and that could be something you do as well. I'll use the same simple notes. This is a cool plectrum. What's this? This is a Herco plectrum. Very thin. Okay, you get a certain sound from that. I probably would recommend that you build structure into your practice routine so that you maybe you do five minutes of that, the beginning or the end, but maybe that's the only time you have in the day is to just pick up your bass and just do that. Well, that's fine. It's exciting you about playing basses. These techniques work on them. Attend workshops or clinics. Now you absolutely never know. I, I live in Singapore now because my wife got a job here and about 10 minutes down the road, Norm Stockton was playing a clinic here. He's a brilliant bass player, amazing clinician. And I went down and sure enough, I met some other musicians and I'm very inspired by what Norm was 
playing what he was saying. When I lived in London, there were bass clinics all the time. Now, you know, failing that, you could always go online and go onto YouTube and see some of the bass player clinics that go back years. The number of times I watch those and I get so inspired by them is it's just incredible. But if you can, it might involve a little trip depending on where you are, but try and get yourself to some of these workshops and clinics, they're brilliant. Base practice can become mundane, it can be boring. If you do the same things and you're not getting different results, then you have to change things up. Now I bet you, you've got one, two or three things that you do to get yourself out of your base practice rut. I wanna hear about them. Put them in the comments below, we can all help each other out. Don't forget, I've got those courses. I've got a funk bass one, I've got R&B soul Motown, I've got music theory and a beginner's course that takes you right from the beginning through towards intermediate level. If you did enjoy that video, then you'll probably enjoy this one too. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you on the next one.